What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Jet's Fishing Adventure. Um, I talked about my top three baits for the month of May and one of those baits were the chatter bait. Well, in this video we're going to go over the chatter bait versus a swim jig. We're going to dive deep into each method or each technique and um, this month the shad spawn is going to be starting up. It's kind of already started up. So having a bait that mimics bait fish is a must this time of year. So without further ado, let's dive deep in this video. All right. Let's just jump right on into it. The first one I'm gonna talk about is my favorite uh, chatterbait or bladed jig. These are actually Z-Man Evo chatterbaits. I actually have a jackhammer tied on right here a, a jackhammer with a zoom um, rage tail so we'll just jump into the setup right quick and then i'll dive into where i fish it so the setup is a genesis 2 um, snyder snipe it is a seven foot five a medium heavy with kind of a moderate tip on the end i love this setup i got a slx dc with a seven to two gear ratio and 15 pound Seaguar Tatsu. Um, I love this reel. I wish, I'm probably gonna end up getting the slower gear ratio because I tend to go a little bit quicker reeling than I should. So it's a lot easier to slow, or it's a lot easier to fasten up than it is to slow down in my opinion. So some of the baits that I like to throw um, is these Evo by Z-Man. It's a really good budget friendly um, chatter bait and in the jackhammer you can't go with wrong you can't go wrong with the jackhammer so some of the places that i like to throw a chatter bait versus a swim jig is around the grass edges or in kind of dingier stained water uh, a chatter bait is really good for making a lot of noise and getting a lot of drawing power to it so that's when in a little bit dirtier water or at night, nighttime fishing is going to be really, um, going to be starting to key in here soon. So that's one thing I like to fish at night is a very loud chatter bait. But as I said in the intro, the shad spawns going on. So having a, a very natural shad color with a, a very natural trailer on the back. This is actually a, um, a hog farmer spunk shad. I'll use this and I love the Thresher 4.2, which I actually got them right here. Got one left in the pure white. There are two great chatterbait trailers if you're wanting to, to have a kind of a natural shad profile. The bluegill will be spawning too this month and next month. So I like fishing a kind of a, a gill profile. And it, when I do, I like throwing the timber crawl on the back of yeah, the torrent timber crawl. So I'll fish this around very like submerged grass that have not topped out yet, around lay downs, a riffraff, anywhere that you won't get hung up or the blade gets won't get choked up with grass. That's the limitation of a chatterbait if you're wanting to fish around grass. You can't fish it through the thick stuff because all those little moving parts here will get clogged up with grass and um, it just won't work. You'll sit there and have to, to really um, jerk it to free it up. Sometimes the fish want that though. Um, some of the most aggressive bites I've had is when I'll get kind of clogged up and I'll rip it through the grass and then they'll just slam it more of a reaction style but a chatterbait works a lot better when there's not so much pressure and it's not really really clear moving on to the swim jig I haven't really talked about swim jigs on this channel very much and to be honest I don't fish one very often but when I'm on a grass fishery or when I'm fishing real thick cover I will pick up a swim jig because it's a lot easier to fish it without getting hung up than a chatterbait. Chatterbait has a real bad habit 
of when it hits a log down or something, it likes to roll over and it hangs into that log. But a swim jig, you'll have a big weed guard here that actually prevents that from happening. Um, so I'm going to run through my, I have two setups that I'll fish a swim jig and then I'll run through what swim jigs I like to fish and I will get into where I fish one. The setup that I fish a swim jig mainly is a is an ALX Zolo Toad Face. This is actually their frog rod, but I love this rod for a swim jig and a jig. This is my go-to jig rod as well. It's a seven foot two medium heavy plus. You might ask what the medium heavy plus is. It's just a little bit heavier than a medium heavy, but it has the same tip is a medium heavy I love this rod it is an awesome rod um, I have been really pleased with it they are a tad bit expensive for this um, this level of the rod but I have been very pleased with it I have a Corrado um, a Shimano Corrado on it it's gear ratio is 7 to 2 I have 30 pound Seaguar um, smackdown braid in the gray color depending on how thick a cover and how clear the water is I'll run anywhere between a 15 to 20 pound Seaguar either Invisex or Tatsu just kind of depends on what I have and what I <laughs> really what I grab first to be honest um, this is actually a backdraft lures swim jig um, it's really good swim jig to go through heavy grass and then you might ask bad boy jigs does have a swim jig and i love his swim jigs too the head on it comes through grass really well and comes through lay downs really well too there it is right here a real good little swim bait kind of mimicking a bluegill in this color so this this is my second um setup this is actually an slx seven foot two heavy with a fast tip on it this is a really kind of it's almost a broomstick but i use this setup when i'm fishing really heavy grass and this is about the only time i fish a swim jig on it when i'm fishing real heavy grass this is actually my um, buzzbait rod, but I'll switch in and out depending on where I'm at. And I actually got an eight to two gear ratio on this one to be able to hook set and then reel those fish out of the heavy grass. I have 50 pound Seaguar braid on this one, smack down. So a few of the swim, or swim jigs I like to throw is, um, this backdraft lures is actually a local company in tennessee too they make a really good swim jig i like the head design it's kind of an arky um, real pointy it goes through grass and i like the line tie on this it's a horizontal it really goes through grass easy here's a little tip if you're fishing through real heavy grass put a bobber stopper on the end of your line that prevents weeds from getting hung up on your where you cut the line in so that's just a little tip there here's a berkeley pyre i can't remember the exact name but it actually has pyre bait scent built into the skirt this is a really good swim jig as well if you're this time of month i don't have any of the shad color one but the shad spawn's happening and um mega bass actually makes a really nice swim jig with a little underspin on it that can be killer this time of year when the shad's spawning. If you have a natural shad color, um, that's just a cool little bait, cool little underspin swim jig hybrid kind of. And um, I, I don't know if I've actually ever caught anything on it, but it does look good in the water swimming. And then, like I said before, you can never forget about bad boy jigs. And then this is their swim jig version. I love bad boy jigs. His hooks are very sharp and they last forever. The trailers that I throw are very similar to what I throw on a chatterbait. 
the only thing that you have to do on a on a swim jig versus a chatterbait you kind of have to do what they call the alabama shake if if the trailer does not put that little wobble in it so this is a timber crawl torn outdoors timber crawl um this you do have to put a little bit of a call it an alabama shake so when you're you cast it out when you're reeling it in you just sit there and twitch that rod like that and all it does all it does is give that bait when it's coming through the water it just gives that bait a little bit of extra action and it looks like a bluegill or something swimming depending on what you're using as a trailer you don't have to do that if you're using a swim bait style trailer like this torrent thresher 4.2 the thing about the 4.2 it has a very good action because of this little tail here and it actually makes the bait roll like this wobble if it's wobbling you don't have to put that extra action but just keep your mind depending on what trailer you're using you might have to put a little bit more action in it to make it look more realistic some of the places that i'll fish a swim jig over a chatterbait like i've said is very thick cover that it, that can be lay downs that can be vegetation mainly i'm fishing vegetation with a swim jig lily pads hydrilla that's top down you can fish a chatterbait on the edges and then you can pick up a swim bait so what i do i kind of do a two-part system i'll fish a chatterbait on the out of the edges of the grass and then i'll throw a swim jig up in the grass and work it way and work the swim jig out of the grass that is a great way to catch the fish that are lingering on the outside of the grass or on the edge of the grass and then catch the fish up in the grass a lot of times you'll have a bunch of fish all over the place and that's a great way to catch them doing kind of a two-part system well i hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on about chatter baits and swim jigs they could be a very fun way to fish and anytime you fish around grass is always fun but comment below what your favorite is a chatterbait or a swim jig i've found in most cases people love either one and they hate one so that's why i try i spend a lot of time trying to be versed in a, a lot of different techniques and that can really help you in a long run definitely in a tournament setting not being afraid to throw either one and you probably have wondered why i take 12 rods with me that way I can have one or both of them tied on at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, comment below, and go ahead and subscribe for more awesome fishing content. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching.